everybody. Today we are going to explore something related to elevation maps uh, and uh, height maps, if you want to call them that, uh, or displacement maps. Um, it's uh, essentially going to be related to dog waffle, but I really want to explore it in another program. This is a 3D coat. So um, you've seen some of these elevation maps. We render them straight out of dog waffle, but uh, on occasion you need to do something different. So we're going to look at using Carrara. We're looking at using uh, 3D coat in this example. Um, we'll start with an elevation map that uh, we created that you might actually see on the website here somewhere that we created uh, a while ago. And so here are some of the color maps and the elevation maps. Um, so let's go and launch um, 3D Code. They are currently in a public beta uh, for uh, 2021. I don't know what they will call it. Maybe it will be version 5. Um, <clears throat> anyway, here's the free trial demo. And so the interface is pretty easy to learn. I like it. Uh, it took me a couple of clicks to try things. I noticed that if you go here in the upper right corner, there's a whole bunch of hidden icons showing. These are essential. You want to remember that uh, as you're looking to turn around, look around it from different angles, you know, basically some viewing controls. Really nice. Uh, there's also this one here. That's pretty important. Uh, it shows in what tool you are. Not not what tool, but like what, what uh, area. There's several different things you can do and in each of these things you can of course uh, you know paint different types model sculpt uh, all sorts of different things so when you when it's time to render that's probably where I'll go but before anything else we want to find is there an option here that lets you load the elevation map we had from dog waffle and uh, turn it into a 3d landscape right here and sure enough there is one right here import image as mesh i'm not sure if that's a new feature i think it is but i'm not 100 percent sure i haven't used 3d code much i i love it i love the story behind it i love the the team uh it's uh, it's a great uh, great tool it has phenomenal capabilities um, and pricing is good for hobbyists, it's great for professionals. I think it's uh, something that uh, you will want to continue to follow too. So I'm going to go there. And then the first thing that was surprising, I was expecting to see just one option to load an elevation map and another one perhaps for a color map, like a texture map, right? And I see here top texture and top bump. And I say, okay, that's probably it. But then I notice what's the bottom texture. Well, it turns out I think they have not just one elevation map, but two elevation map you can load. And then you can blend here, prefer bottom or uh, the top. So you can, you can basically... Uh, do a blend of the two and kind of uh, <clears throat> and do a transition from one to the other or combine them in a way. And so that's interesting. I, I haven't played with that yet. In fact, let's do the very first step. Let's focus on just one, the top texture and the top bump texture. So it turns out the bump texture is what we in Dog Waffle call the elevation map, right? The height map. So that's where you'll click here and navigate to the elevation map. Um, that's not it. That's the texture or color map. Here is the elevation map. I, I named my files uh, elev or color, and that certainly helps you uh, recognize which one is which. So I'm going to grab this one here, and uh, you see it, it, it supports a number of file formats, which incidentally are also file formats we have in Dog Waffle. We do Targa, that's kind of our preferred format. Uh, we do BMP bitmap, PNG, JPEG, and TIFFs. So those are great formats to work with. And uh, in this case, I imported a JPEG, and that's it. So I'm not going to do a whole lot more. There is actually a basic thickness and a bump thickness we may want to play with a little later. Let's first just see what's happening if you load just that grayscale elevation map. And there it is. So what you actually see is that it's kind of a block. See how it has a side here? And if you click outside of it, uh, you get to do a couple of things, usually like rotating with the left button, right button, you can zoom in. So that gives you some interesting viewing controls already. But maybe that landscape is not just exactly where you want. Uh, maybe you need it at higher elevation. And I think that's where that, that uh, extra number 
the, that extrusion parameter was uh, that we saw in the interface. So I'm going to go just start a new one. I'm not going to save that and start again. It still remembers the file. This time I want to change the basic thickness. No, actually it's okay to keep that really low. Let's say just two, but okay that. But this one here, the bump thickness, that's how high the bumps go. That's where you can scale the terrain, the landscape to go much higher, the peaks of the mountains to go much higher. So let's give it like 22, okay that and okay that. So now we should have a, a fairly small, thin base you see here on the side, very thin, but it goes much higher for that elevation, for that bump. Okay, so that's one way to work with this. Maybe with the uh, with the thumb wheel I can change something. I was hoping to zoom in, but actually what it does, and that makes sense, it's changing the size of some tool, which could be a brush if you're in paint mode, it could be uh, the tool if you're in sculpt mode. Uh, so there's other things. With the right button I can position myself a little bit more into this. Uh, it looks a little bit blocky, right? I mean, you might want to zo uh, you might want to smooth it a little bit, and that's where you start looking here with the paint. Right now, I'm in paint mode, so I can certainly use that to actually maybe paint some watercolors. Uh, click on that if you need to change the color, um, and let's say you wanted to actually make this thing here blue. So now you're being that we are seeing that we are in, in paint mode. We are in fact doing exactly that. We're painting some blue colors here. Um, so that's one way to do this. Uh, you could then change it to a greenish color, maybe a little bit more yellow, green, something like this, and then start putting the color in for the, I don't know, the, the grassy area, the landscape, stuff like that, right? Okay, so, so we, we get the idea of how to paint that if you need to. If the only thing you're doing is import the elevation map, then the next thing is going to be coloring it. And um, you can also uh, do more than painting. That, that's where it's really starting to look interesting. You have the final render eventually, the render room, if you want to call it that. There's a sculpt room I also bumped into. Uh, let's not waste too much time. I'm going to go straight to a smooth option here. Smooth um, convex, smooth uh, super relaxed. There's a couple of different choices. And that will um, that will allow you to perhaps get rid of some of these uh, very uh, blocky looking details that you might not need in all areas. Um, and and the nice thing about it is you, you can also undo much of that, so you can use Control z uh, Again, if you need this thing smaller, you, uh, you simply uh, use the, the thumb wheel on your mouse, so you have finer control of where that is happening. It's also faster, it's more responsive if it, if it only has smaller details to worry about. So there you go. Um, so that's that's one experience. There's, as I mentioned earlier, there's also this thing up here, uh, and so there's some extra controls. If you if you're not seeing the right button doing the zoom or the left button doing the rotation or the middle button doing some extra moves, uh, most likely you can go up here to get something a little bit more uh, more usable. And one thing that you typically do is you click and drag. So uh, you, you click and drag that tool. You don't click and then go back in the scene to do that. It's really just a temporary help, kind of similar to what we do in Dog Waffle with some of our sliders. So if you want to move it, you just click and drag it from that move position. Uh, here, the rotation. Uh, with the left button, here's a zoom, and so it's it's quite natural, quite quick, very interactive, actually, very very responsive. That's one thing I noticed when I loaded some larger uh, height maps, how responsive it was. It was very optimized. So now let's go another step. Uh, let's go back to creating a new one. Again, we're not going to save it. Um, I'm going to go to import same tool again. This time we keep that uh, height map, but we're adding the top texture. Right, so this one is going to be the color map. We have the height map here, and we're going to use the color map. Let's say this one. Uh, let's use this one. That's the original full size. So we have that um, on the thickness. Maybe we'll make that even smaller, just very tiny little bit uh, for the blocky. And then here, I don't know if that's going to make a difference because we don't have the bottom texture. We only have the top texture, right? We also don't have a stencil. That's another thing. I haven't experimented with that yet, but I suppose you can probably carve some holes uh, by using a, a stencil map. Uh, you know that will indicate places you don't want to see, 
and it will remain transparent of sorts. So we'll, we'll experiment with that separately in a different tutorial. Uh, let's go and go with this. I'm going to go just 100% here, uh, just in case. You know what? We, we'll, we'll do that later. Let's, let's just leave it at exactly... Uh, we can probably give the exact number here. Yeah, that's something... I don't think we do that on our sliders. Well, maybe some of them we do, but I've seen it sometimes where you could just use a slider, but you cannot put a numeric exact value in there. And that sometimes really is a must-have, right? So that's a great utility here. Let's go. And uh, this time we should have the coloration, and there it is. We should have the coloration in addition to the height map, right? So I'm going to go switch to a different tool here. Uh, it, I should have the lighting, and that's probably under the rendering. Or, or we can see, there it is, there's some, some light controls to, to rotate or to change the orientation, the brightness of the light, how much lighting you want there. I don't know if it's from two different lights. I haven't explored that completely yet. Uh, you can probably adjust the contrast of the lighting. Ah, okay. So there's there's a variety of options just for that. There's also one I've seen somewhere here. Take time to read those tooltips. It's really insightful. It's very it's very well uh, done with little tooltips to get started. And then soon enough, you'll see, okay, there's a, a camera control, but there's a couple of other things. I've seen somewhere where you can switch easily from uh, a, uh, a perspective view to a autographic view or something like that. So there's a lot of different uh, controls to, to get you to the view you want. Uh, here I'm going to go a little bit more like this. And let's say now I want to do a rendering, right? So eventually we may want to do a rendering from... Uh, from at that particular angle, let's say perhaps a little bit further down, and there you go, uh, almost, almost, okay, not just yet, there you go, okay, so let's say I want to do a rendering of this, uh, the, the main room is up here, and if you click on that, you'll see some of the other options, and uh, as again, again, as we saw earlier, we could do some more sculpting there, in fact, there's one that's really rad, uh, let's do let's do that just for the quick demo. So so again with the thumb wheel we can change the size of your tool, and there's a whole bunch of different uh, 3D sculpting tools here, right? So you can you can do some pinching, uh, probably to carve a, a canyon or a river or something like that, you know, something that that goes right in there, and 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 do some extra uh, deformation of that uh, landscape. That that's a really great feature there. Right, so, so if you want to further improve, you started with something in Dog Waffle, you have an elevation map, and now you want to add some extra, maybe make it a little bit wider here as the two rivers come together. Uh, <laughs> it's going really low here. Uh, that's going to be the flood delta zone. Uh, but there's a, another one I wanted to show you too. That's the snake clay, right? I mean, this is just, I haven't even had time yet to explore them, but look at the snake clay here. So imagine a snake, you grab it and off it goes. <laughs> and there's another, and there's another one. And they, they interact and it's just beautiful clay modeling and, and whatever you want to call it. And it's full 3D, right? So if you, if you, uh, if you go back to the view controls, like right here, you see this whole thing here in 3D. So so that's really an interesting way to to see how you can start with an elevation map from from uh, <coughs> and you can undo that too. Uh, you can start with an elev elevation map from Dog Waffle and then um, do other things with it, right? And and certainly one thing you can also do is go render it here. So let's go do some render. And so now you see it's doing multi-pass, several renderings. And let's say you don't like the the view uh, you you can change the view angle a little bit and have it re-render with that, or you can change the lighting. You know, get 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 different shadowing effects. There's there's all sorts of different. Uh, uh, options there. Uh, I think there's different environment maps. There's an environment light. Uh, you can have the environment. Uh, you can probably have it displayed, see the environment too. I haven't actually really explored everything yet here. There's a depth of field. Look at that, the focus. So, so depth of field, so it's a little bit blurry nearby. Something like this, right? So anyway, so that's the start. Um, you have a tool here that can quite easily be used to do, you know, take it further. You, you start the elevation map in Dog Waffle and then take it into 3D code. And as I mentioned, you know, it's a real, that's a real 3D program. So you have a, uh, a phenomenal number of tools. Let's just do one more here with the, um, 
what was it, the uh, the snake snake clay, and just do a little archery or something like that, and go back to the render. And where's my render room? There you go. And there you go. Oh, I still have that uh, depth of field. Let's reduce that. Let's keep it crisp. And um, there you go. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope this is insightful, inspiring. There's really a lot of power in this 3D code tool. And I, I know I'll be using this a little bit more. Um, I think it's, uh, it's on the right path. But thanks uh, for watching and we'll see you next time. I just